Okay, in this video, Zach's going to continue on with the creation of graphical assets by making the stopwatch icon. This will be the icon used for the power up. Right, for like the bullet time effect. Exactly. So let's go and create a new document again, 64 by 64. I'll press F, we'll zoom in like we've been doing, nothing out of the ordinary so far. Let me move my tool palette again to get it out of the way, and let's set up some guides. So we'll do a 50% guide. And another 50% guide, so we know right where the center is. I'm going to do an elliptical marquee, because we're doing a stopwatch, which is a fairly circular thing. Let me slow down my mouse a little bit. And just grab right there on the center. Now hold down Alt and Shift while you drag, and there you go. So we don't want this to be too big, because we still want to do like some knobs or buttons kind of hanging off of it. So this may be something about like so. Eh, down one more. There we go. Okay. So that's going to be perfect. I just had to be really picky about that for whatever reason. So let's create a new layer, and we'll name this uh, Watch Ring. And with the uh, elliptical marquee tool still selected, we're going to switch over to a subtractive selection, and we're going to make another ring right in the center. So again, Alt and Shift. And we'll pull this to right about there. So now we have this just ring-like selection. Now, pick any color you like. Once again, if you just want something for contrast, pick a big, loud color. And then just Alt-Delete, drop that in like so. <clears throat> okay, so now once we have that, we need to change that to make it look like a piece of metal for a stopwatch. So I'm going to double-click over here on the right-hand side and grab my layer styles. Now let me see if I can move some stuff around a little and help you see as much of this as you can. We're just going to go over to our color overlay, and we'll choose a new color for this. So whatever color you had becomes irrelevant as soon as we do that. I'll choose a lighter gray. Let's also drop on a simple bevel and emboss, and really, you know, that looks pretty good. Now, on principle, I have a hard time leaving the, the bevel and emboss settings at their defaults. <laughs> So we'll flip it around. I think when we were doing the antibody, we had a uh, light drawn in to look like it was coming in from the right. So right. We'll do, uh, yes, the right, exactly. That's right. Uh, so we'll, we'll do something <laughs> similar over here, and we'll leave that as our global light, which will uh, also come in handy for the creation of drop shadows here in just a minute as well. So let's click OK, and there we go. I'm going to grab my magic wand tool, and we'll grab the little inner circle that's inside of that. Let's go under Select. And I'm going to transform that selection by holding down Shift and Alt and scaling it out a little bit so that it kind of runs into the outer ring of the watch just a tad. So press Enter once you have that. Create a new layer, but put this layer underneath the watch ring. And we're going to call this uh, background. And we'll fill that with, again, whatever color you want. In this case, uh, red's going to work out just fine. Let's double-click to open our layer styles back up. And this time, we'll do a gradient overlay, which we will set up to radial. And we need to play with that gradient a little bit. So let's take the centermost color and make that a pale gray. And what that's going to do is just kind of be some darkening toward the center of the stopwatch. That's really all it's there for. Uh, let's take the outermost color, and we'll make this a much darker gray. But then we're going to create a new flag right in the middle, which we are going to push to near white. Not quite up to white. You don't want anything to be super white if you can avoid it. And it might not be a bad idea to hold down Alt and just drag out a second copy of that, so that way you can start to push those shadows back toward the corner of the watch a little bit. So maybe, well, we don't want to tighten that up too much, so we'll leave a nice... Uh, ring there on the outside. We'll push this back a little. I think I'm even going to take that outer shadow ring and we'll lighten that up just a notch. Okay, so now we have the uh, body and our background in place. And from here we need to create the hands of our watch. So we'll make a new layer up on top, which I will call Watch Hands. And let's get our line tool out. Currently set to one pixel. Let's press the right bracket key and push that up to two pixels. And if we're still set to red, we can go ahead and set this to black. I'm just going to draw out one long, kind of like a minute hand that reaches up, and that might be a little bit far, but that's okay. We'll just take our uh, eraser, which I'll set back over to pencil mode, if it will let me. Thank you. And we'll just chop the end off of that. Let's get our line tool back out, and we'll drag out another line uh, pointed down here to, what is that, oh, about uh, 7.30 or so. 7.30ish. Yeah. So there we go. So now it's, it's about 7 o'clock. Uh, of course, if we wanted to, we could uh, 
could have had this anti-alias that might look a little better. Hang on, as I sit here and get all indecisive for a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and just check anti-alias. Let me see what it looks like, because I can always put it back if I don't like it. So, something right about there. That won't change that line too much, but it should change this one a bit. And I kind of like that a little bit better. Now, let's take this layer, though, and I'm going to nudge it. Just, well, I guess down one is really all I wanted to do there. Let's get our brush tool, and I'm going to thicken up right down here a little bit. Something a little bit more. And when you back out, that's going to be more felt than seen, just so it looks like there's a little more mass there at the center of the watch. Now, uh, let's open up the layer styles for this, too. Let's drop on a drop shadow. And the direction is fine. I don't have a problem with that, but uh, it's way too big. It's too far away, and it's way too bright. So we'll just pull that down a little bit. I'm going to uncheck Use Global Light. I'm going to tweak the, the light direction just a little. So it's similar, but it's going to be off by just a little bit. For some reason, my monitor keeps shaking. I don't understand why. All right, so I think that's going to work. I darken it up just a little. So it's just enough for you to realize that that is a shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, now let's drop on another layer, and we'll call this the second hand. And we'll grab our line tool again. This time we'll set this back over to a brilliant red, and I'll draw this coming out here to the side. You could make that a little bit thinner if you wanted to, like maybe a single pixel. It's not really going to matter that much, in my opinion. Uh, I will take my paintbrush tool, and we'll drop a, a red dot here in the middle. Uh, it looks like our opacity set really well. Let's set that back up to 100. So again, just adding a little bit of mass there to the very beginning. Now, I'm going to take my layer style that I dropped onto the hands, and we'll just hold down Alt and drag that up onto the second hand so I get the exact same shadowing taking place up there as well. A couple other things I really need for this to look like a stopwatch, because right now it just looks like a wall clock, mm -hmm. uh, would be a button up here on the corner and maybe some kind of a winding knob up at the very top. Okay. So what we'll do is come out down here to the background, and I'll create a new layer there. And just so that's how we're creating a layer down toward the bottom. And we'll call this button. And because I want this to be angled, what I'm going to do is grab the polygon tool. We'll set our number of sides up to four. And any color of the rainbow will work, including the red we've been working with. So that's a little big. Let's maybe draw that a little closer to the body. So boom, there we go. That's going to be our button. Let's double click to grab its layer styles. We'll drop on a gradient overlay, which we will set over to reflected. We'll reverse that. Then take the angle and tweak it around a little bit, and there you go. It's an immediate metal button. If you wanted to, you could stroke it, set the stroke to inside, set the size down to 1, set the color over to a dark gray if you wanted to be able to see it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. It's entirely up to you. Um, to, I think that stands out a little bit too much, so you might want to pull back on the amount of gray. Maybe something about like so. Okay, so there's our button. Now we need a winding knob, so uh, let's grab a new layer. And we'll double-click this. We'll call this Winding Knob. And that was working good for us before, but let's go ahead and jump back over to the Rectangle tool, and we'll just draw out some sort of rectangular shape, about like so, and maybe a little bit bigger, hard to say. Of course, I could just transform it. Well, let's say that works. Uh, I will, though, nudge it down just one pixel. Let's hold down Alt and drag the layer style from our button right on top of that. And, of course, that gives us a funny little diagonal uh, gradient, which doesn't really work for us. So let's jump into our gradient overlay. We'll drag that back out to zero. And then we need to change some stuff around. It looks like we don't really need that stroke anymore. We can probably get away with lightening up the shading just a little bit so it doesn't go all the way out to black and it might not be a bad idea to adjust the overall scale of the gradient so we can push that out just a little let me see what happens if I bring that stroke back on I just don't like it no it doesn't look as good on that one it doesn't look as good so we'll go ahead and leave that gone uh, let us do this though let's take our gradient overlay make sure it doesn't ever make it all the way out to true white we get it very near but not all the way out there That'll probably help a little bit so we can actually get some sort of a line of continuity across there. Okay, so when we have all that, let's close this down, and uh, we'll go back down to the button layer, create a new button right in the middle. Let me set my color to, let's just say a dark gray. Not too dark, but I'll figure out exactly what I want here in just a second. And um, you could just get the line tool. And we'll just drag a little line there, maybe a second one right next to it. You know, just something to connect that button to the actual body of the watch. And uh, we'll call this uh, knob uh, 
shaft. I don't know. Because that would be the shaft upon which the knob is sitting. Let's maybe push that down one more so that kind of lines up a little bit better. And I think that's about it. Now, at this point, if we hit Control-H, we have a very realistic-looking watch, and everything else has looked very hand-drawn up to this point. So uh, we can fix that very much like what we did with the Nanite Probe. We could bring on a uh, posterized layer. Now, because we have... Not only varying shades of gray here, we have a bright red we need to work into the mix. Uh, playing with a number of levels we have is going to be critical. So I'll click OK just to make sure we commit that, and then we'll come in here and set this maybe to 5... Uh, let's try it. Not 56. Let's try 6. That looks pretty good. Let's give that a shot, because all we're going to do in the end is convert, uh, commit this over to multiply, and then start bleeding back its opacity a little bit. So all it's really doing is adding to that uh, that banding a little bit, if you will. Another uh, trick, if this just still looks a little bit too rigid for you, and uh, I don't know if this is something you'd really, you know, you might not personally want to use it, but I've used it in the past, it works pretty well, is grab your entire watch up to this point, drop it into a group, and we'll just call this the watch group, duplicate that group, press control E and collapse this new group down to a single layer, and then, uh, let's see, you could grab your filters, and you could add a little bit of noise to this. Now, you want that to be monochromatic. You don't need all those colors to it. So you can noise that up just a little bit. You could also come over to your adjustments and desaturate it, and then do the same thing you did up here with your posterize, which is set it over to multiply, and then start bleeding back its opacity. So really, it's only there to start kind of breaking things up a little bit. If it's getting in the way, like you'll notice we've lost a bit of the brilliant red that we had on our second hand, just get out your eraser and erase away that section of the, uh, of the noisy part. And there you go. So, And you can play with that to your heart's content and find a look that you like. But uh, I think that's going to pretty much do it for our watch. Okay. So now let's take our background, and we can hide that away, of course. We'll go to File. Save as, go to our original PSDs, and we'll do stopwatch. We'll maximize our compatibility. Control Shift S to save as again. We'll jump up a level, go down to PNG, and stopwatch.png will be great. None, and there we go. Okay, very good. And that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.